Many people own Bitcoin, but don't fully understand what a Bitcoin key really is. Is it something physical or something digital? Is it related to a hardware wallet or a seed phrase? Where are Bitcoin keys stored and how do they work? In this video, we'll help answer these questions, which can provide a huge stepping stone toward managing Bitcoin holdings with confidence and proper security. So what is a Bitcoin key? A Bitcoin key is not a physical object, like the key to a door or a lockbox. It refers to a cryptographic key, which is a very large number. The number could be recorded physically, such as written on a piece of paper, but it's primarily used within a digital environment to send and receive Bitcoin. A number such as a Bitcoin key could be expressed in many different ways. Humans are most familiar with the decimal format using digits 0 through 9. However, hexadecimal or binary can be other ways of representing the same number, often seen in the context of computers. At the most basic level, a Bitcoin key is really just a bunch of ones and zeros. The numbers used for Bitcoin keys are so large that even supercomputers would be unable to make relevant progress in scanning through all of the possibilities. Doing this would take modern technology billions of years. This means that if a Bitcoin key is selected in an unpredictable way and then kept hidden, it will offer strong security against the possibility of someone else encountering it. Next, you need to know that Bitcoin keys come in pairs. There is always a private key and a corresponding public key, both of which are numbers. Taken together, they are called a key pair. The private key is always created first through random generation, and then it can use cryptography to calculate its public key partner. This cryptography only works in one direction. Anyone with the private key can produce the public key, but someone who only has the public key cannot reverse engineer the private key. The public key is used to receive Bitcoin by building an address that people can send Bitcoin to. We've already done a video all about addresses, which you can find using the card on your screen or the link in the video description. When Bitcoin is sent to an address, the Bitcoin becomes locked to that address on the blockchain. To later send Bitcoin out of that address, the correct private key is required. The private key can unlock it by applying a cryptographic signature on the spending transaction. Without a signature from the correct private key, the Bitcoin network will reject any transaction attempting to move the Bitcoin. Therefore, a private key needs to be kept private. You must protect your private keys so that other people can't spend Bitcoin that belongs to you. Meanwhile, public keys are not as sensitive because they can't be used to spend Bitcoin. Ultimate control over any Bitcoin balance is determined by who holds the private keys to those addresses. If you purchase Bitcoin on an exchange and don't transfer the Bitcoin to an address controlled by your own keys, then you can't access that Bitcoin without permission and help from the exchange's keys. If a Bitcoin custodian runs a fractional reserve or loses funds due to hackers, it could put your Bitcoin in jeopardy. These concerns have led to the popularization of the phrase, not your keys, not your coins, meant to convey the fact that if you don't hold the keys to your Bitcoin, you're taking a risk by relying on the third party who does. Although holding your own keys comes with responsibility and effort compared to using something like an ETF, it's the only way to ensure you have permissionless access to your funds and nobody else can cause you to lose those funds. The task of holding keys and managing risk can be customized to fit different needs. We've done a video about multi-signature wallets, which you can find using the card on your screen or the link in the video description. Multisig enables Bitcoin to be controlled by multiple different private keys. For example, someone could build a wallet that requires signatures from any two out of three private keys to spend Bitcoin. This means that the Bitcoin would still be protected and accessible if any one key among the three is lost or stolen. And for the same reason, any one key could be held by a custodian without the custodian being able to access the funds by themselves or prevent the rightful owner from accessing the funds with other keys. At Unchained, we've utilized this concept to build a platform that empowers our clients to hold a majority of keys and independently control their Bitcoin, but also get help from other key holders. Finally, let's talk about how Bitcoin keys are generated and stored. The best way to create a private key from scratch is to do so with elements of unpredictability and randomness, called entropy. 
Someone could flip a coin a bunch of times or roll dice to generate the very large number needed for a key. However, the most common method is to simply use a hardware wallet, which utilizes a secure algorithm that protects against procedural mistakes. A hardware wallet can store the private key it generates and also use that key to apply cryptographic signatures required for spending Bitcoin. However, electronic hardware doesn't last forever, which is why a hardware wallet will instruct the operator to write down a seed phrase. A seed phrase is a set of words that represent the original entropy and can therefore recreate the same private key repeatedly. Importing a seed phrase into a new hardware wallet can restore access to any funds controlled by that key. You must keep your seed phrase secret and out of the hands of scammers, which is something we help you learn how to do in another one of our videos found in the card on your screen or the link in the video description. We hope you found this video helpful for conceptualizing Bitcoin keys and how they work. If you did, please click the like button to let us know and subscribe to our channel to see more videos like this one. Thanks for watching.